Welcome dear students. Today we are going to discuss the definitions of genetic species and ecosystem diversity. The main objectives of today's deliberation are to define the levels of biodiversity and to highlight the significance of various levels of biodiversity. To begin with, let me first of all explain what biodiversity is. The term biodiversity was first coined by entomologist E.O. Wilson in 1986. Diversity is a concept which refers to variety within the living world and term biodiversity is commonly used to describe the number, variety and variability of living organisms. Biodiversity may be defined as the totality of different organisms, the genes they contain and the ecosystems they form. The Convention on Biological Diversity defines biodiversity as the variability among living organisms from all sources including among other things terrestrial, marine and other aquatic ecosystems and the ecological complexes of which they are a part. This includes diversity within species, between species and of ecosystems. Biodiversity Contraction of biological diversity is the variety of organisms in a given area, the genetic variation within a population, the variety of species in a community or the variety of communities in an ecosystem. Now the levels of biodiversity. It has become widespread practice to define biodiversity in terms of genes, species and ecosystems corresponding to three fundamental and hierarchically related levels of biodiversity. So, biodiversity may be considered at three levels, genetic diversity, species diversity and ecosystem diversity. First of all, the genetic diversity. Genetic diversity refers to the differences in genetic makeup between distinct species as well as the genetic variations within a single species. This is the least visible and arguably least studied level of biological diversity. It is the level of biodiversity which refers to the total number of genetic characteristics in the genetic makeup of a species. It is Distinguish it from genetic variability which describes the tendency of genetic characteristics to vary. Genetic diversity is building block of life and is responsible for the variability among individuals within any species based on variations in genes. So, it is variety present at the level of genes. Genes made of DNA are the building blocks that determine how an organism will develop and what its traits and abilities will be. This level of diversity can differ by alleles that is different variants of the same gene such as blue or brown eyes by entire genes which determine traits such as ability to metabolize a particular substance or by units larger than genes such as chromosomal structure. The amount of diversity at the genetic level is important because it represents the raw material for evolution and adaptation. Genetic diversity serves as a way for populations to adapt to changing environments. More genetic diversity in a species or population means a greater ability for some of the individuals in it to adapt to changes in the environment. 
with more variation, it is more likely that some individuals in a population will possess variations of alleles that are suited for the environment. Those individuals are more likely to survive to produce offsprings bearing that allele. The population will continue for more generations because of the success of these individuals. Less diversity leads to uniformity which is a problem in the long term as it is unlikely that any individual in the population would be able to adapt to changing conditions. As an example, modern agricultural practices use monocultures which are large cultures of genetically identical plants. This is an advantage when it comes to growing and harvesting crops, but can be a problem when a disease or parasite attacks the field, as every plant in the field will be susceptible. Monocultures are also unable to deal well with changing conditions. The interdependence between genetic and biological diversity is delicate. The natural world has several ways of preserving or increasing genetic diversity. Among oceanic plankton, viruses aid in the genetic shifting process. Ocean viruses which infect the plankton carry genes of other organisms in addition to their own. When these viruses containing the genes of one cell infect another, the genetic makeup of the latter changes. This constant shift of genetic makeup helps to maintain a healthy population of plankton despite complex and unpredictable environmental changes. The loss of genetic diversity was supposed to be the cause of the infamous potato famine in Ireland in 1840. Since new potato plants do not come as a result of reproduction, but rather from pieces of the parent plant, no genetic diversity is developed and the entire crop is essentially a clone of one potato and is susceptible to an epidemic. High genetic diversity is also essential for a species to evolve. Species that have less genetic variation are at a greater risk. With very little gene variation within the species, healthy reproduction becomes increasingly difficult and offsprings are more likely to deal with the problems such as inbreeding. The vulnerability of a population to certain types of diseases can also increase with reduction in genetic diversity. Genetic diversity in itself can be measured at many different levels including population, species, community and biome depending on what is being examined and why. But genetic diversity is important at each of these levels. Within species, genetic diversity often increases with environmental variability, which can be expected. If the environment often changes, different genes will have an advantage at different times or places. In this situation, genetic diversity remains high because many genes are in the population at any given time. If the environment did not change, then the small number of genes that had an advantage in that unchanging environment would spread at the cost of others, causing a drop in genetic diversity. In communities, it can increase with the diversity of species and its increase depends not only on the number of species but also on how closely related the species are. Species that are closely related, for example, two species of maple have similar genetic structures and makeup.
and therefore do not contribute much additional genetic diversity. These closely related species will contribute to genetic diversity in the community less than more remotely related species would. For example, a maple and a pine. An increase in species diversity can also affect the genetic diversity and do so differently at different levels. If there are many species, the genetic diversity at that level will be larger than when there are fewer species. On the other hand, genetic diversity within each species can decrease. This can happen if the large number of species means so much competition that each species must be extremely specialized such as only eating a single type of food. If they are so specialized, this specialization will lead to little genetic diversity within any of the species. Now, the species diversity. It refers to the variety of living species within a geographic area. A species may be defined as a group of organisms which are able to interbreed freely under natural conditions to produce viable offsprings. Species are well known and are distinct units of diversity. Each species can be considered to have a particular role in the ecosystem. So, the addition or loss of single species may have consequences for the system as a whole. The species level is generally regarded as the most appropriate for considering the diversity between organisms. This is not because species diversity is more important than the other two types, but because species diversity is easier to work with. Species are relatively easy to identify by eye in the fields, whereas genetic diversity requires laboratories time and resources to identify and ecosystem diversity needs many complex measurements to be taken over a long period of time. Species are also easier to conceptualize and have been the basis of much of the evolutionary and ecological research that biodiversity draws on. Species diversity may be measured using the following characteristics. First, the species richness, that is, the number of species within a particular sample area, and species evenness, which refers to the evenness in number of individuals of each species in the area. For example, for two sample areas X and Y, there are two species A and B. In X, there are 92 individuals of species A and only 8 of the species B, while in Y, there are 50 individuals of each species. If species richness only was used to account for species diversity in X, the diversity might seem lower than Y, although both have the same number of species, because almost all the individuals encountered would be from only one species. Species evenness in conjunction with species richness is thus a more useful indicator of species diversity. For example, an area with a greater number of closely related species is thought as diverse as the same area with the same number of species which are not closely related. An illustration of this point would be an island with two species of birds and one species of lizard. This island would be more diverse than an area with three species of birds and no lizards. Therefore, species diversity can be assessed in terms of the number of species or the range of different types of species an area contains. So, 
Species diversity is all of the different kinds of living things found in a certain habitat or ecosystem. Worldwide, more than 1.7 million species have been identified, but estimates of the actual number vary from 5 million up to 100 million. 14 million appears to be an estimate that is commonly quoted in the literature. Species diversity is the variety of species within a habitat or a region. Some habitats such as rainforest and coral reefs have many species. Others such as salt flats or a polluted stream have fewer. Species diversity, however, is more than just the number of species in a given area, habitat or ecosystem. Some species importance can be out of line with their numbers, for example, keystone species. There can also be great differences in species composition over time. Species diversity can also be greatly affected by physical conditions in the ecosystem where they live such as differences in temperature, light, structure and chemical composition. Now coming to the ecosystem diversity. An ecosystem is a community of organisms and their physical environment interacting together. An ecosystem can cover a large area such as a whole forest or a small area such as a pond. Ecosystem diversity encompasses the broad differences between ecosystem types, the diversity of habitats and ecosystem processes within each ecosystem type. Ecosystem diversity is the variety of ecosystems in a given place. Ecosystem diversity deals with species distribution and community patterns, the role and function of key species, and combines species functions and interactions. Ecosystem diversity is the variety of ecosystems within a landscape or region, including wetlands, prairies or savannas, lakes, rivers, forests and agricultural landscapes. The basic principles of biodiversity apply here as well, but the scope is much larger. It is at this level that the interaction and links among species and the consequences of those links are evident. Less diverse ecosystems such as cold water streams or small trout lakes contribute to the functioning and productivity of large areas such as bioregions. Now the difficulties in examining the ecosystem diversity. The enormous range of terrestrial and aquatic environments on earth has been classified into a number of ecosystems. Major habitat types include tropical rainforests, grasslands, wetlands, coral reefs and mangroves. Measuring changes in the extent of ecosystems is difficult, but there is no globally agreed classification of ecosystems. Thus, ecosystems can be considered on different scales. Transition between them are usually not very sharp. A lake may have very sharp boundary between it and the deciduous forest. But the deciduous forest will shift much more gradually to grasslands or to a coniferous forest. This lack of sharp boundaries is known as open communities. As opposite to closed communities which would have certain transitions 
and makes studying ecosystems difficult since even defining and demarcating them can be problematic. Species contained within a given ecosystem vary over time. The classification of Earth's immense variety of ecosystems into a manageable system is a major scientific challenge. Studies of ecosystem diversity are carried out on different scales from one ecosystem to an entire region containing many different ecosystems. Regions containing a great variety of ecosystems are rich in biodiversity, but individual ecosystems containing endemic species also make a significant contribution to global biodiversity. Dear students, this was all about the definitions of genetic species and ecosystem diversity. Thanks a lot.